Hey, buddy. Hey, <laughs> are you so happy? Y'all have been out of town for four days and so Bear is ecstatic that we're going out to the garden. Are you happy? <laughs> Faithful sidekick. My little brother got married this weekend, so we went to Arkansas. We just got back earlier today. Pulled in this afternoon. Um, the boys helped me. We unloaded all our stuff that we took this weekend and I was in the garden five minutes later. So I spent the afternoon out here piddling a little. Look at this unharvested chamomile. It's pretty awesome, huh? It's evening now, I just finished cooking. I actually realized upon turning the camera towards myself that I'm still wearing my apron. <laughs> if someone's making a fashion statement, it's me with my apron. <laughs> you wanna come in? So I just turned the fans off in here. I'm gonna shut it up because tonight's actually getting a little chilly. Not freezing or anything, but lower than I really want these plants to have to endure through. So I've shared with you guys about how slow growing my seedlings have been. I think they got stunted. We had some really cold temperatures after I had started my seedlings and my greenhouse just isn't holding heat the way I hoped it would. We'll address that next year. I mean, we're past the point of needing it to hold heat this year. But I, um, I actually gave them some fertilizer today. Whatever fertilizer you wanna use for your plants is fine. I mean, just any sort of liquid fertilizer. I really like Neptune's Harvest stuff. Fox Farms makes some good stuff. Just make sure you follow the instructions. You don't wanna overwhelm your plants. You can actually do it a lot of damage by giving them too much fertilizer. We don't wanna supersize this. Uh, but I gave them some very diluted liquid fertilizer today and I'm hoping that will kickstart some growth. Taking the shade cloth has helped some, they've grown some, but I definitely see some discoloration, some different things that make me think that um, I've got some issues. So we'll see, I'm hoping that tomorrow they're gonna to start greening up. They're gonna start growing. I really hope. But I did want to make sure that I closed it up tonight because tonight I think may be our last really coolish night um, before things really start warming up for the spring. And I hope with the warm up and with feeding my plants that I'll get some good growth here soon. I've actually never dealt with what I'm dealing with right now with having such stunted plants and I can't exactly pinpoint what's causing it. Um, I don't know if it was those cold temperatures. I don't know if it's potentially the soil being, it is a little barky. It's got a good deal of wood in it. Um, but I just don't think that would be causing this much stunting. I think maybe it's like a perfect storm of all of these conditions, but I'm not gonna get stressed out about it because I'm not gardening to be stressed, you know? <laughs> like, it's okay, we'll figure it out. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll have to direct sow some seeds into the garden. I live in a place with a long season. I can direct sow tomatoes. It's not ideal, but sometimes things aren't. Can still grow a good garden, can still grow food. Speaking of ideal, this garden is looking great. Now I will say, it's very random. I've got a lot of random things coming up, but right now I've got roses that are getting ready to bloom. I have dahlias coming up. I have some very pretty irises. Like look at this lovely light blue iris. Here I have perennial yarrow coming back. Here are some more dahlias, more roses, and lots more irises here. Like look at that, isn't that pretty? And here I can't wait for this one to open. This is a really pretty like dusty pink. I love dusty pink. It's one of my favorite colors. Back here behind the greenhouse, my um, comfrey is blooming. Isn't that pretty? And I have all of this uh, hookra black knight, I think is that what that's called, growing all back here. Coming back into town from being out of town when it's like the season is gearing up is always so exciting because it's just like thrilling to see what grew while you were gone. So you guys just saw where I had done my um, uh, micro dwarf tomatoes and my green stalk. I also sowed some marigolds which sprouted while I was gone. That's pretty exciting. I planted dahlias here recently. They're coming up and I transplanted out some eggplants, which look great. None of the seeds I sowed over here are up yet. It's been a few days, but it's also coolish at night, so this might take a little bit longer. So you know how when you're having friends over and you clean your house, 
you understand this. Like sometimes do you ever just invite people over so you can get your house clean so you can have the motivation to do the deep clean that you need to do? Is that, I know that's not just me. Surely, please someone tell me that it's not just me. I literally will have people over for dinner. I mean, I like, I like people, <laughs> I like feeding people. But truly like there's this ulterior motive that I know that I'll have the motivation to clean my house if I have guests coming over. And for me, garden tour videos are that. This week, I have a very long list of what I'm working on in the garden, preparing to shoot a garden tour for this weekend. You're my friends that are coming over for dinner. <laughs> Just so you know, that is like my motivation for keeping my garden tidy, for knocking things off the list. So one of the things I'm hoping to do this week, which you'll see this, I'll show you in video, is we're hanging our trellises, we're doing a lot of different things. And I feel the sense of really wanting to get them done for the sake of shooting a garden tour video. Oh, I miss my garden when I was out of town. I was so ready to get back here. Even now, um, coming back and seeing what new has popped up is just thrilling. Look at these irises. I don't remember the names of all of my irises, unfortunately, but this one is really pretty. I was sitting here on my bench earlier and just looking at my cottage garden area. Actually, let's have a seat. And as I was surveying this space, I was thinking about how different it's gonna look when all of this fills out. Um, because this is all going to fill out as the season goes on. This is actually still very sparse because it's only April. Like this plant right here is a Babtesia, which will actually be really big. These alliums are going to sprout and bloom. All that Rebecca is going to bloom. These rose bushes are really going to fill out. That hibiscus will be like four or five feet tall. Uh, there's some massive colocations in here. I think it's colocations. Maybe they're alocations. I can't remember which ones are in there. But they'll be several feet tall just all throughout here. In about four or five months, you'll be able to sit here in this spot and be largely surrounded by very wild growing things. It's such a thrill of the garden for me, the way it develops as the season goes on. Like right now is thrilling because things are starting to grow and it's like, oh, it's the garden time. It's warm during the day. I can plant things. I can start things. But knowing this is going to be so massively different in such a short period of time just really is thrilling. This is something else I also struggle with here. I'm wanting to show you everything while I'm talking about building towards a garden tour. Look at the potatoes. So look great. They've changed a lot just in the time I was gone. So I sowed a lot of seeds out here that haven't come up yet, which is, like I said, not surprising. It was only like five days ago I sowed these. I know you all just saw that video. I shot those before I went out of town. Um, but it's been cool at night, so that can slow things down. I harvested some massive strawberries when I got home today. And look at that. Yes. You know, it's funny when I first started doing garden tours, I thought I would make like one a month. I just want you to know, if you were here, I would have given this berry to you so that you could experience this. But I'll have to eat it on your behalf since you're not here. Obviously, I very quickly learned that one a month is not enough for garden tours because when you start getting to this time of year, the garden can just change so much in a week especially whenever you're putting a lot of work into it because you know you have friends coming over so hanging the trellises continuing to plant that garden uh, preparing in here to plant the peppers out that's definitely on the list for this week um soon we're gonna put more focus on getting the flower tunnel ready i'm not quite as pressed on this because we're still harvesting some food that's growing out here we have a good deal of beets and rutabagas um, and you know all of my onions out in the main garden died back these actually still look okay um, but yeah we got lots of sunflowers coming back in here oh i gotta show y'all something yes more snacks for me check that out this isn't what I had to show you. What I had to show you is out in the orchard slash waterfowl pen. Hello birds. So this goose is sitting on a nest out here, hissing. But she has several fresh hatched babies under there. And they haven't started wandering yet. We think they just started hatching this morning because they're still kind of wet and she's still sitting on several eggs. And then these ladies, all three of them are still sitting on a mess of eggs inside. And then one over here in the corner has got 
multiple freshly hatched babies underneath her. So I have five mamas sitting. Oh, hush. I feed you. I feed you. You quit your hissing. It's a very dramatic bunch out here, but either way, we have lots of little goslings um, on the different nests. We'll probably have to wait a week or so until they start really leading them out to see what actually has hatched. But five mamas sitting on nests is a lot. Interestingly, it takes 28 days to hatch a goose egg. That one mama is sitting outside the house on a nest that has some babies hatched. Those babies were not, there were no eggs outside the house like two weeks ago. So they must have pushed some of the eggs they were sitting on out and her built a nest and started sitting on them um, because she hasn't been sitting there long enough to hatch eggs. So I don't know what they got going on in their little commune, uh, hippie mama goose house thing, but more power to them. We're gonna have a lot of goslings bears down there chasing the kill deers so the to-do list this week is get this ready to sow peppers continue sowing these beds we're going to decide exactly what's going where here so we know what kind of trellising we need and to get the trellises hung in the other garden and plant it and will and i actually today came out here and walked to this field so we wanted to do like a big till garden here at least start it now i don't content i don't plan on continuing to till it but doing an initial till and then we can backfill it with compost and different things tarp it and potentially have it set up as a no-till garden eventually when we build our house is going to be out in this pasture i do not think we're going to be starting that project anytime this gardening season because the way we want to do that um, we're just not prepared to start it yet we want to get our downtown buildings like going we're trying to make decisions that we're not completely bogged down with stress and while i really really want to build my house i'd really love to have it built while my teenagers are still like able to live in it um, i'm also not willing to just cripple us with stressful decisions and so we're kind of waiting on that it would be really cool if we could start it by the end of this year but i highly doubt it's going to happen during this gardening season either way though when we till this front area to do an in-ground garden, we're gonna kind of keep it out of the way of where the house is gonna go, just in case. Um, but we're gonna do kind of this front area, a really big space. And we nailed down today that what we're gonna do is kind of like a three sisters-ish type garden. So if you're unfamiliar with a three sisters garden, it's a Native American gardening technique where they grew corn with some sort of sprawling squash, typically like a winter squash, and some sort of like green bean, something that climbed. And it was basically a picture, they call it three sisters because it was three plants that were largely symbiotic with one another. And you, you plant the uh, corn first, you let it get going, and then you plant the beans so it can climb the corn, you plant the squash, around the same time as you plant the corn so it can then cover the ground and keep the weeds from growing. Um, I have done something like that before. Um, I joked and called mine three sisters and a cousin because my corn was kind of puny and I threw some sunflowers in. Stand in as climbing places uh, because my corn wasn't doing super well. And that's more or less what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a really big space. This kind of three sisters in nature but instead of doing like a pole bean, we're gonna do cow peas um, because they do really well here in South Carolina. Uh, we're gonna do some different squashes, pumpkins specifically, that do really well. I think Will has some seeds uh, from Dr. Kibler, a local guy who really has stewarded a lot of heirlooms called the Dutch Fork pie pumpkins, as well as some Seminole pumpkin seeds. We may throw some more in there, as well as some watermelons I think we're gonna throw in there too. I think we're gonna do a lot of sunflowers and maybe put some corn in it as well. But the idea is three sisters. Are we gonna stick to three types of plants? No, um, we're gonna make it a family affair. <laughs> we're gonna have like nine sisters, but the idea is a symbiotic relationship between plants that can benefit each other by growing together. And that's what we're gonna do in that big in-ground space, which should enable us to grow a lot of food, which we wanna do, to experiment and to get some new spaces underway. This 
is definitely a lot of garden space. Um, call it the garden belt because it's a strip that runs down by the driveway. Jeremiah recently posted a video on his channel of his morning chores. He shared a lot of drone footage in that if you guys want to check it out. And he told me he would come out and shoot some drone footage for me for, with some coming up garden tours. Once this is all in, it'll be about an acre. Um, the orchard area with the pond is a little over an acre, but that's including the pond. It's, probably, it's about an acre and a half. Um, so this is a lot of growing space, but if we're ever going to offset, make our animals and grow some fodder crops to give to them, as well as really putting up enough food for our family for a year, still having some to share with other people who work here with us and neighbors and friends, uh, we could use more growing space, surprisingly. Especially when we're doing stuff like this, that's not necessarily the most efficient, but it's beautiful. So yeah, the Three Sisters Garden, we were talking about that. That's not on the list for today because it is still getting cool at night. It's not really like time to get that going. We could probably till that soon and start working towards it, but we won't plant it out for a while yet. Y'all, I spent 20 hours in the car in the last four days. More than that, really, if you consider all the running around town we did. We crunched it in, went back to Arkansas. It's my first time to really be back in Arkansas other than like a real fast trip and going and picking things up. It was really good. We didn't get to see everybody we wanted to, but we got to see family and had such a good time celebrating Drew and Katie. Hello chickens. I missed you. All right, so I just saw this um, purple from up there and I wanted to come down up here and see which irises were blooming here. Oh, look at this. So many of you guys sent me irises. Unfortunately, I don't know which are which. I don't have all their names. My garden turns out as a place of anonymity because I didn't tag everything. <laughs> We've got some down here by the pond though. I have irises planted all down by this pond, all over in front of the house, beside the greenhouse. Oh, and when they start blooming, it just gives me such a thrill. It's getting to be the time of year that I love to take walks by the pond because all the big old massive bullfrogs jump into the pond while you're walking by them. Slightly terrifying, but completely wonderful. <laughs> Today was a long day of travel, but I just wanted to come out here, spend a moment with you guys. I'm gonna go get my travel-worn children into bed and get my travel-worn body into bed. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me this evening, and it's gonna be an exciting week in the garden. I bless you, until next time.